Thank you for joining us this afternoon to welcome the Society's newest recipient of the Bram Stoker Medal of Cultural Achievement, Young Lee. Every year, the council members of the Society elect a select number of exceptional individuals to the honour of honorary patron in recognition of their outstanding and significant contributions to their given fields. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to the latest honorary patron of the University Philosophical Society, Young Lee. Thank you. So, it's good to be back in Dublin. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's weird, man. It's crazy, this award. Thank you. I'm really glad to be here. And uh, it's an honor to be here at uh, Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> it looks exactly like Hogwarts. Uh, yeah. I've never done a Q&A or anything like this, so I'm a little nervous, but it's good. It's nice to see you all. Thank you. No problem, no problem. So uh, yeah, my first question is, um, like, Young Lean. You know, it started one thing, like, very different, sort of, you know, back in, uh, I, I, 2013, 2014? Yeah, 2012. 2012, sorry. 96. Okay. 96. <laughs> um, but, like, like uh, to you, like, what does, is there, like, one thing that Young Lean sort of means and has been persistent throughout, like, the... The, the various phases, whatever, like, you know, between like Warlord and Poison Ivy and unknown death and unknown memory and stuff? Yeah. Um, I guess, like, I guess for me it's always been the same. Mm. I've always been doing the same thing, and then it's just the, pers the perception of other people, you know? Mm. A lot of people are like, oh, it started out as a meme, and then it turned into something serious, mm. and, you know, when Warlord came or Stranger or whatever. But for me, it's always been sincere. Mm. For me, it's always been, you know, genuine. And like, I've been the same person, you know. Sure. For me, like Ginseng Strip is as genuine as Blue Plastic mm. or Dud Mark or Jonathan Leandor, like mm. my side project. It's, it's the same. It's just people didn't get it at first, you know. Mm. It was like, for for them, they had a perception of hip hop and what it would be to be a rapper, and you know, so they thought of it as a joke. And, mm. Um, I don't know, if, if you've been on the ride long enough, then I'm, I'm happy you're still here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's for sure. It. You can change your mind about things, you know? For sure. Just and, don't and call things off as a joke, because you're going to end up, you know, being the one who's left at. No, and then, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, how, how is your sort of, I guess, like, approach to, like, you know, the artistry of, like, you know, making music and, like, doing that kind of stuff? How, has that changed much, or has it always been sort of the same for you again? I think it's turned into... Uh, more of a job, you know, to be honest. Like, in the beginning, it was just a hobby, like, when I was 16 or 15 or whatever, I was still in school, and, uh, like, we had the basement, and, you know, I became friends with Axel and Mickey and Sherman mm. and Good, mm. and, uh, I don't know, I don't think we took it that seriously, you know. I knew it was going to be big, because mm. I saw the potential in these two people. I was like, mm. these are the best producers ever, you know. Sherman was like a rock star when we were 16, you can mm. see it. Mickey as well, and Benjamin, Blade, everyone in Dream Gang as well. You know, mm. I saw it, but I don't think they saw it. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but like the artistry in itself, back to your question, um, I think I treat it more like a job now, mm. you know. I have to pay rent, I have an apartment, I got... Mm. Mouths to feed, you know, I pay people's <laughs> salaries. <laughs> I have to like go into the studio for certain hours. I can't just, you know, fuck around. Yeah. <laughs> but I do uh, fuck around. Yeah. Still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically still fucking around. Like, what am I doing here? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. 
It's like yeah. the Truman Show or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, uh, I know if you feel this way, but I, I, I feel this way, I'm sure other people do, that like you're not like maybe just a, a, a musical like artist that you do, you seem to put a lot of like, you know, your music videos and stuff seem like really interesting or whatever. Um, what's like the creative process like that goes into making your videos? Would you like work really closely with them or would you kind of delegate someone who you, like, whose vision you trust or whatever? For me it's like, I hear a lot of songs in, in colors mm. and uh, I think there's a word for it but like if I make a song then it, that song might be like yellow or red and then I just start writing down ideas so for Red Bottom Sky I just saw like leaves and I saw a chainsaw and I wrote on my, I, uh, my iPhone mm. notes where I write everything I just wrote those words down and I wrote like castle and um, like uh, uh, go kart, whatever. I just write these words down, mm. and then I send them to a director, and I send the song. Mm. And I only work with three directors, so I've oh, been working cool. with them um, since the beginning. And everything else is just very spontaneous. Mm. Uh, the first videos were just after school, like yeah. just hanging out. Like people thought it was there was so much depth in it. You know, they were like, "Oh, he's talking about." Society and capitalism, <laughs> <laughs> and like showing a bottle of Arizona. This is like the end of capitalism and the youth. There <laughs> was none of that. There was none of that. Like you can put any type of aspect into my music as you want, mm. and that's what you should do. That's what mm. you're supposed to do. I love that. I do that. I hear a Beach Boy song, and I, I think they're talking about whales, but they're yeah. just talking about their, their morning. You know, that's yeah. how music works. Mm. What's your question again? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that was good, don't worry. Um, so, uh, <laughs> the beach one. Um, so, like, you've worked with some pretty, like, uh, cool American artists, like Travis Scott and Frank Ocean and stuff. Um, first thing, cool American. <laughs> uh, what was it like, like, working, uh, like, with them? Uh, like, did you, like, meet up and hang out and stuff, or is this kind of, like, online? Or, and secondly, who do you, like, have enjoyed, who have you enjoyed working with? The most is it still just like you know your friends like Young Good and Young Sherman and stuff, or have other dudes kind of like been pretty cool or whatever? I think uh, I think like I've really enjoyed working with a lot of people I looked up to when I started making music, and when we started it was we looked up to Space Ghost Perp, Metro Sue, a lot of the stuff that was going mm. down in like underground Florida, mm. and working with them and Creation and Gleesh and mm. people from Glow Gang like Ball Out and like mm. we we listened to so much Chief Keef. Chief Keef was like religion, <laughs> it's like true religion. But I mean, like everyone listened to Chief Keef. But when we listened to Chief Keef, people would kick us out of the party. <laughs> and then two, three years after, he did like a remix with Kanye West and everyone wants to listen to Chief yeah, Keef. Yeah, yeah. So for us, Chief Keef was something sacred and like to work with. He's not sacred, he's just a regular dude at the yeah. end of the day. So is Frank Ocean and Travis Scott. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, so for me to work with like Ball Out, Tado, hang out with Fredo, hang out with Ball Out, just that was fun because mm. it's so spontaneous though. You're just mm. in the studio, you're going back to back. And it's the same with my friends, but yeah, I, I hate online stuff. Mm. I'm really bad with online. Mm. Like, I would never send the song. And uh, I don't know, working with like Ariel Pink as well, mm. uh, and Dean Blunt, and just artists that I enjoy. I would like to work with like Kate Bush, if she ever hollers at me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I've, me and Frank Ocean watched the movie. We watched The Dictator. That was funny. <laughs> he really likes that film. He laughs a lot. And he's like an enigma to a lot of people. But yeah, to yeah. me, he's just a regular guy. Yeah. If he was here, he would be a regular guy to you as well. Yeah. I'm a regular dude. You we know? <laughs> like, just build up these enigmas around people and these mi mysteries. And at the end of the day, working with Mickey and Axel and mm. Benjamin Blade and Ty Boy and Echo and White Armor is, is the same for me. It's mm. Working with Travis Scott or Frank Ocean. Or maybe it's even better working with my friends. It is better, mm. of course, I'm not going to lie, because we have a you know, very special relationship. We have a real friendship. These mm. are like my best friends in the world, so mm. we're always going to push each other. And I think you got to be frank with one another. Mm. When you make music, you got to be like, no, nah, that sucks. 
Mm. <laughs> do that verse again. <laughs> and you get to push each other. And yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. You. I don't really think established artists do that. Mm. If you're like David Bowie and you meet, I don't know, Tricky, whatever, it's gonna be Tricky meets David Bowie. They're not gonna push each other. Yeah, yeah. And then they're gonna walk away, and it's gonna be a great collaboration. Mm. But I think you really push each other when you have a personal relationship and you have memories. And mm. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I talk too much. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. Next question. Uh, so, what? <laughs> What sort of stuff are you listening to like right now? What's like on your Spotify playlist? I have to check. <laughs> <laughs> or else I'm gonna say something else. I'm just gonna say the same thing. I appreciate things. the honesty, the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say the same things that I say in every interview unless I look. <laughs> you know? Uh, this is not an interview. Uh, I mean, give me give me one second. Robert Wyatt. My friend Ossian introduced me to a guy called Robert Wyatt. I've been listening to Arthur Russell a lot. Cool. Arthur Russell, I like Arthur Russell. I like Playboy Cardi, Jackson 5, uh, Young Money, Billy Holiday, Fleetwood Mac, Radiohead. <laughs> I just, I listen, I'm, I'm like, if you want to get into any business, you have to be a nerd in that business. Mm. And I was a music nerd for mm. as long as I can remember. I uh, I had an uncle, I mean, that's my sister right there, we have an uncle, and he worked at MTV when I was a kid. Mm. And I was just like, it's very inspired, you know? All mm. these records, all these people, so I just, I always, you know, nerded out in music. I would download all the albums, mm. tour and just sit at home, listen. And then we'd get into the picture, and then weed plus music and mm. sitting in your room, you know, you're in another world. Mm. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say anymore. But I think I, I, I listen to a lot of music, and yeah. I think that's the problem today as well. Like a lot of people try to get into music, and they don't really love music. Uh, they just want to be famous. Cause yeah. With globalism and Instagram and everything, everyone is basically a star. Mm. There's a lot of positive aspects. To globalism as well mm. but there's also that idea of anyone can make it but mm. you really love music or do you just want like purple dreads for the day and, <laughs> you know, yeah yeah I mean it's, it's a trend yeah and the real are always gonna last because mm. then you have like a genuine interest you know you're always mm. gonna try to explore new genres well, no. mm. um, so yeah no you yeah like you're saying you listen to like lots of different sorts of music I feel like that's always been like like there when you listen to you, I always felt that anyway. Um, what sort of, and this is going to be the second last thing I'm, I'm going to say to you, uh, what made you want to like have that like side project or whatever? Like, like why didn't you just sort of do everything is Young Lean and sort of make Young Lean like different? Yeah, sometimes I wish I did that. <laughs> but I don't know, I think it's nice with side projects, it's, it's a good like outlet and you know, I made like me and Mickey made that mark when Young Lean didn't feel very current. Like mm. we felt very like young and stupid and wild, and we wanted to. Uh, we were like basically like punks at all yeah. our gigs. We were like smashing stuff and bleeding, and like why are we playing this like slow mm. song every night? Like we should make some punk. Yeah. And then we did it with the auto tune, and we, we just did our take on it. But then if I would release it through Young Lean, then, uh, I don't know, I think it's important with different outlets and different alter egos, you know, mm. creating a character can help you find uh, new uh, parts about yourself mm. and shit, stuff like that. For sure. Yeah, I know, uh, so this leads me on to the last thing I'm going to say, and that is, because um, you were saying about, you know, smashing shit at your shows and stuff, yeah. uh, I, I, I said to you before, but I was there at your... Uh, only show in, so far, I think, in Dublin, yeah. back in uh, whenever that was. I, I remember like Jinx five and Strip and playing. Yeah, yeah, five years ago. I remember Jinx and Strip and stuff. Like yeah. you guys going like fucking uh, crazy when you were like playing that, even though that song's like uh, slow yeah, as fuck. That's um, what I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Contrast. For sure, for sure. Uh, I know. Uh, before uh, we pass on to people, some questions, to people here. Uh, I'm gonna Nardwar you here and give you another gift, and uh, this one's a little bit closer uh, to my heart because. Right. Uh, uh, but my friend Connor has it here. Do you wanna bring it up, Connor? So it's a picture of us at that gig. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. <laughs> I, 
I didn't want to spoil it earlier, but yeah. We met before. We met before. <laughs> Damn. You look like a baby. <laughs> How did they put you in the suit? How did oh. they make you <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll Scandalous. <laughs> we'll take questions to people here. So if you want to put your hands up and I'll like point you or whatever. Okay, Nile first. I just wonder when you're making music uh, as John Tony Drew 127, is the creative process different at all when you're making music that way? Or do you approach it differently? Or would it be the same as uh, it's, it's easier, it's easier because I can make it myself. I, I usually do like, sometimes when we were recording Stranger, I would just stay in the studio and I would do loops, like I could take like a Daniel Johnston guitar and I would just loop it and then I would sing a song over it and then it would turn into a Jonathan Linder song. So uh, the process is more like, yeah, I guess I, I can be alone when I do it and uh, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> What's your name? Harrison. Hey, Harrison. Hi. What's good? Yeah, uh, I was just wondering, because me and my friend, see, we're 16. Yeah. Me and my friend, uh, we're trying to make a song with him. Yeah. Yeah, and he posts it on the story, and he takes it back. And uh, see, all we have, we only have phones. Yeah. yeah. So, Steal a computer. <laughs> we had, uh, I had a computer. I was. <laughs> so shitty. So shitty. I didn't record that on my computer though. I'm thankful that I had a computer, and I, I definitely. I think you should do something about that shit. But I didn't record any of it on the computer. Uh, we had a, there was a studio in my school that I went to, but I didn't go to music class. So I befriended this dude, I went to music class, and I asked if I could borrow the studio. And uh, I would just go there, uh, I just finessed that studio, and then I would bring my own beats. <laughs> and uh, that's where I recorded Hurt, blah, 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 a lot of Unknown Death tracks. And, uh, yeah, Mick, uh, young dude, he went to a music school and they had computers. <laughs> yeah, no, you'll be good. If, if you have that ambition, you want to make music, the world is yours, you know. You can go and get it. Trust me. Okay, yeah, dude there in the green jumper, yeah. No, you, yeah. 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 I don't know, I was just feeling like that. <laughs> I love that show though, that show was good. Yeah, it's a fun show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Christopher. How are you doing? You're Svensk? Okay, <laughs> that's the. Oh, uh, plug it out. I think I had timing. I honestly think it was luck and timing. Uh, a lot of like Swedish artists, maybe, you know, as you were saying, we have a lot of producers. We produce like the majority of pop music. We have Max Martin, we have Robin, we have The Knife. We have a lot of good music. And uh, right now, you don't live in Sweden, but there's a big wave of Swedish rap coming up right now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But I think I, I think it was timing. I think I knew what I was doing. I was on those I was on those blogs, you know. I was on those like underground Mishka blogs, blah blah blah. I was sending my songs to any contact that I would have. We were trying to get, you know, 
um, people from Miami that we listen to, and I would just send them songs. I would be, I was annoying. I was really annoying. I was in my room sending people songs. And I think with a little luck of timing and the space that hip hop had during 2013 and 2012 with everything from Odd Future to Ace of Rocky, there was, there was a gap where there could come a 16 year old Swedish rapper. I think that's it. I was lucky and I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Just gotta ignore it. You gotta keep pushing. Like, if you're true to yourself, you know what you do. You love what you do. Then, fuck them. Fuck them. You know. <laughs> if they hate, then that's on them. You know. That's it. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the <laughs> no, 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 no more. I can't. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Use my buttons, man. I'm good. How are you? I, I never really moved out to Miami. Yeah. We were just, uh, we had a, our uh, rest in peace to our, to our old manager who died. He got us out there because he had a, a spot there, a studio. And we were in New York and we were, um, yeah. We j I just kind of like left. I just left everything and I just wanted to record music. So we ended up in Miami and uh, yeah, things got a little ugly. But that's you know that's what happens. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think I, I I don't think there was any particular influence. Like okay. we just ended up there based on you know there were studios, there was an apartment we could stay in and stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I think we got time for a couple more questions. If that's that's chill with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. Two down the back. Uh, also Swedish. All right. What's going on? What is going on? Has in board. That's not. <laughs> uh, so that's about lyrics and what your approach to lyricism has been and it's changed over the years. Uh, yeah. If it's something you would like, take a lot of time to consider, carefully craft, or if it's more spontaneous. I think uh, I was more like aware of the craft when I was a kid. Uh, I, I wrote a lot. Like I had, I had like a project when I was 11, 12, and we would just write lyrics, and I would write lyrics every day. And then I cared about lyrics. I, you know, when you're younger, you listen to like a lot more real hip hop. <laughs> 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 you know, I, when I was like 11, 12, I loved Nas, Ilmatic, and I loved Talib Kweli, and I wanted to sound like those that dudes, but I didn't, you know. And I had to figure that out. I didn't sound like that, so I found my own way of uh, writing lyrics and. It's basically like, a lot of people think that it's cut up, but it's not cut up, you know. Cut up is like when you take, you write a sentence that makes sense, you cut it up. But I don't do that. They don't make sense from the beginning. I just write them. I just write like a, a nice word. I write like, oh, uh, velvet, and then I write uh, staircase, and then I put them together with like real things that I've lived in. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to explain, man, but uh, it's, it's important to like, always care about lyrics, but at one point I think the emotion is more important, you know, what you say and like, how you say it, rather than the words. The words can mean a lot of things. For sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Like the first month when you back to Ireland, Thank <laughs> Good to be back. I like it. I remember being back in 2014 and you were here with the boys. I just remember you guys being really humble, kind of fucking up and fucking shit up with throwing bread around the place. Bread? Oh, yeah, you had a loaf of bread. bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's a waste of bread. <laughs> I've never done that. Do you think you guys have really changed your attitudes? Do you think you're still as like, fun loving as you used No, we're still fun loving. Fun loving dudes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like, 
Whenever we get together, last time we got together for like a show like that was in London and we were all there, like Thai boy, everyone. And uh, we're exactly the same. We were the same since we were famous as well. We'd still be throwing bread around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Have you ever had any like old jobs? Or have you just like committed to making music from like 16? I worked at McDonald's for a while and uh, I had my first summer job at a pool in uh, small album and I cleaned uh, the pool and the bathrooms and I watched movies that's what I did like Baywatch but not that sexy <laughs> <laughs> but these were like short jobs and I was like 15 and McDonald's was when I started 10th grade because I wanted more money uh, like you get cash for being in school in Sweden but I want like an extra thousand so I can buy weed or f uh, clothes you know I want, I want it to look good and uh, uh, I'm not I'm not saying that our parents like didn't have enough but it was I grew up nice you know I had a good family but I always wanted more I wanted to work I wanted to make my own money so as soon as I could I had that job and then after like six months I had my first show and I called my manager McDonald's and I said fuck you <laughs> I'm playing a show and uh, never had an ordinary job after that yeah uh, psh, I don't know young lean I'd say you know Jonathan that's a bit too private <laughs> but if you, if you call me Jonathan it's nice as well I don't care you know? <laughs> Oh damn, where are you from? Cork. Cork. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. No, you can call me whatever you want, man. <laughs> oh yeah, dude down the back. Negatively, I'm gonna be frank, you know, like drug use is not fun. Like being addicted to opiates or anything, it's, it's not fun. You know, it's a fucked up lifestyle. I, I wouldn't condone it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. But I think in the beginning, uh, experimenting with like hallucinogens is can be a way of opening up one one door that was locked before. And I don't know. I think like if you try, I don't know, LSD or shrooms at least once, and then never try it again. That's enough. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to go too hard with it. But I wouldn't tell anyone to do drugs. You know, a, a real musician or like a real author or whatever, they should be able to write a song about what it's like to do drugs without ever trying drugs. Like that's a real artistry. You know. Yeah. I love Young Sean. <laughs> That's my best friend right there. Uh, he's been focusing a lot on tours and uh, sometimes he has writer's block, you know, but he makes a lot of music. Uh, but sometimes he has a little bit of trouble with getting out of the house. He's a lovely soul. He's a pure soul. Yeah. Pardon? Um, I guess it's on that note, on rice a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've experienced it. Uh, sucks. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> uh, I think, like, uh, stop thinking about it. It's like if you can't sleep, if you have a problem with sleeping and you're in your bed and you're thinking, like, how can I sleep? How can I sleep? It's just going to get worse. So. If you have writer's block and you're like a musician, author, whatever, you journalist, just uh, don't think about it. Go swim. Go take a hike. Whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm. 
it's good that they bleed into one another. I think that's good. But I think it's just like, you know, if you if you're really into like making fast food and then you also like French food, then if you all mix that it can be like a big turd, you know, it's gonna suck. <laughs> so I try to stay true to what I listen to and what I wanna do, but you know, like it wouldn't it's, it's more about myself than the fans, like, of course, the fans would be confused if, like, that Mark album would come out as Young Lean, but uh, it's more, you know, just separating things in my mind, so I keep it organized, and whenever I do, like, a Jonathan Linder 96 project, that just makes me more excited to do a Young Lean project, and whenever I do a Young Lean project, I just want to go and do that. So, they all feed off each other, you know, it's like putting... Uh, what's it called? Fram. Seeds. Seeds. Seeds in the soil. <laughs> and you know, you gotta watch the trees grow. Different times. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. I care about... <laughs> hey, listen, like, I care about my fans, but if, if, if they... If I would make the music for them, my music would suck. And that, that goes for any artist. When you start thinking about what another person wants, then you're just guessing, you know? Yeah, of course. Of course, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Everyone makes music for themselves. Unless you're like Drake, maybe. <laughs> makes good music sometimes, <laughs> but he's like a multi-million business, you know? He has to care about what the fans think, uh, or else he's gonna, a lot of people are gonna lose their jobs. Uh, I don't. This is just me expressing my music, and if people like it, then I'm really happy. If they don't, fuck it. But the second that I would start thinking like, oh, maybe the fans are gonna want me to do like a... Kyoto song, part two, uh, unknown memory type vibe, uh, Frosca, whatever, then I'm just guessing that you're probably not gonna like it at the end of the day. If I was just making mashups of what I've already done, then I'm like copying myself. Headline tomorrow has to be like, Young Lean beefs with Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I could <can> never. <laughs> yeah. What's up? I'm in Dublin. I'm in Dublin right now. What more do you ask? No, I'm kidding. I want to play a show here, but I'm, uh, I'm not doing like any shows until my album's done. I'm just working on my album and then probably do like a Europe tour, play Dublin. Have a good time. <laughs> Go to the pubs. <laughs> okay, I think it's time for like one last question. Yeah. Um, hi. Um, hi. Roman type beat. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, from uh, it's Gustave Dore, this painter, and it's uh, Lucifer when he was an angel before he gets kicked out by God in Paradise Lost. Milton, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, beautiful drawings. It's a nice contrast between the dog as well. <laughs> dog, God, Lucifer. Okay, maybe we should extend another round of applause to Young Lean for that today. All that stuff you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's go. Yeah, okay. Yeah.